in here. So, um, we're live. <laughs> okay, I think so. Waiting. Let's to see, see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Waiting to see if we see Will sale. Let's see. Huh. Interesting. No, nothing yet. Sometimes there's a little, little bit well, of a so delay. Well, it's live, I think. So yes. Yes. Yeah, so she is. Perfect. Perfect. Hi, ladies and gentlemen. Since I um, found out that we are live, <laughs> I figure I should say hello. <laughs> hello to everyone. Let me make sure I'm recording. Yes, I am. Lovely. So sorry for the delay. We We're had some waiting. technical difficulties. Yeah. <laughs> we thought we were connected when we were not. So sorry. <laughs> and just making sure we're sharing. Um, I know I shared to the new Caribbean Edge page. So just trying to share to our other page if this will let me. To the group, you mean? Yes. yes. To, and I don't know if you can do it because I don't see it in this one. Mm -hmm. To our first group. Okay. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. In the meantime, I'm going to um, introduce you to um, the founder of the Caribbean Edge here. <laughs> <laughs> this is um, Miss Dawn Wilson. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Sorry for the delay, but welcome to our holiday episode on the Caribbean Edge. We truly appreciate you tuning in. And we thought we were live, but apparently not. So thanks for everyone that was sending us messages that they couldn't get on to see us. So my name is Dawn Wilson. <laughs> and I'm Sherilyn Marshall. Happy holidays, Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah. Um, happy Hanukkah, how do you say it? Um, happy everything, Merry everything, Merry everything. <laughs> So we want to start our holiday show by thanking all our viewers, which is you guys, for your loyalty, your dedication to us. We could not have been so successful without you. So we appreciate you tuning in every single week. We appreciate all the comments you've made. We appreciate you sharing us, inviting your friends to watch us. Um, a lot of you have even given us guests, recommended guests for the show. Um, we've had some amazing guests on this show and we're gonna go through um, some of them tonight and how they've impacted us. But one of the things that I love about what we do is we have also connected so many different people. Um, we ourselves have met so many people through this show. We've been invited to host different shows as well so doors have opened for us as well as everyone else and that's what it's all about is uplifting each other and sharing all the positive vibes and energy and um, our unity is strength and also uh, um, just showing and enhancing the Caribbean and bringing people in to see what Caribbean people are like so there's so much to be thankful for that we do on this show so thank you viewers thank you so much <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate each and every one of you we do we do so we started talking about some of the traditions and we talked about for jamaicans it's waking up and having ackee and sawfish our national dish with bananas and um, dumplings and callaloo and breadfruit. And is this all day through? Do you, or do you change up the menu at some point in time? It's, it's kind of tradition, you know, and it's just a, an abundance of food. But all um, day through? All day. Okay. Well, as, as, I think as Caribbean people, we love our food, we love our music, we love our culture. So we find every reason to celebrate mm -hmm. <laughs> but the holidays are extra special because you're boasting you're showing off you're preparing your homes and you just want to make sure your food looks good and everybody eats and is merry so yeah extra reason to celebrate <laughs> yeah. and then church is a big deal for us um, it's about putting on your Sunday best and going out and giving praise and I asked you church when, and you said... It's usually, I believe it's 
Christmas Eve that we're going to church. Yeah. Um, I think most of us do Christmas Eve. Yeah. yeah. And then the, the Christmas is actually with your family and playing dominoes is, is normal, mainly for the guys, but obviously women play as well. And then drinks include sorrel and rum punch and different things that you don't normally see. And you talked about your mom baking cakes. So yeah. tell us about that. She baked. She baked bread every weekend. But Christmas time, it was very special because she would always bake bread on Christmas Day. Mm -hmm. So you get the the pork that she just took out the oven, the ham that she just took out the oven. If she decided to do turkey or any other type of meat, and you're throwing that in between that bread and you are, oh my gosh, in seventh heaven. That's like the first thing in the morning though. But then we do like a whole other menu for lunch and dinner. It's like callaloo, rice, fried rice, fried chicken, stew chicken. Let's throw some pork in there. Let's throw lamb in there. Let's throw other things, fish in there. Everything. Macaroni pie, um, potato salad, coleslaw. I mean, provisions, ground provisions, yummy. I mean, a lot of crap that you just, <laughs> that you just eat. Good crap. You eat a lot. Good crap. Very yeah. good crap. So if you're from the Caribbean and you eat anything special, just chime in and let us know as well. We're going to go to well, some we're of the forgetting. We might be well. forgetting something. I know traditionally we, you know, our grandparents and parents soaked the rum with the fruits for months before. And then they make these beautiful rum cakes and you just die black for cake, them. Black cakes, we yeah. call them rum cakes, we call yeah. them black cakes, we call them fruit cakes always soaked yeah. in some and people are always alcohol. giving them away too so you're sharing with your mm -hmm. friends and family mm -hmm. as well for the holidays we have our rice and peas we have our ham um i don't think we're that big on turkey at least not in my household but you have everything else the fish the the curry goat all that good stuff so yeah it's a time for food and we've carried on those traditions even though we live in the united states as well where we're going to different homes and celebrating the holidays. Yeah, because it's about tradition. Yeah, it's about it's, family. It's, and, it's about yeah. the family traditions. Yeah. So you follow them. That's what you were raised with. Yeah. It's what you know. It's what you learned from. It's what you enjoyed. So um, you're like, I want to continue doing this. Yeah. Yeah. And we have to um, say as well, you know, and acknowledge people that have lost someone that they care about um, during the holiday season, that can be a very difficult time for them if you've lost a parent, a husband, a wife, a child. So we do recognize that there is a sense of loss that people experience during the holiday. So please check on your friends. Um, that might be going through a different, difficult time, invite them over and, and just share the love with them. Um, like we were talking about before the show, just, um, just be aware of your surroundings and the people that you come in contact with. And like I can, you can notice, you can very much notice if someone isn't as ecstatic about this time of year by the things they say, by the things they do. And just pick up from that and know that you can't really mention that. Just be um, aware. Yeah. 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 If someone's withdrawn yeah. during this time, then, you know, just check on your friends because it yeah. can be. Um, safety is another issue, especially, I don't think growing up I worried about safety. <laughs> but here, I definitely do with, you know. Growing up um, because you grew up in Jamaica? Growing up in Jamaica, okay. yeah. And we weren't on the road, we were home and everything else. But I know there's so much partying going on. I'm sure they were about it in Jamaica. I just didn't at that stage in life. But now that I'm an adult and I have my own children, I think about you know, safety, you know, of our children on the road, people driving and drinking, you know, know your limits, call an Uber, call a friend. Um, you know, you hear about so many accidents and deaths during the holiday or not paying attention or rushing. It's just things people need to do to be more aware. Yeah. Um, 
because our kids are on the road and that's important to us as parents as well and we're on the road too so everybody's on the road everybody's on the road just be extra careful during the holiday season as Mm -hmm. well Mm -hmm. Um, from a safety standpoint Mm -hmm. so let's talk about oh jankunup that's a big tradition in Jamaica. I'm not sure how big it is anymore, but I remember growing up and being very scared as a little girl of these um, street dances. And they were dressed in these scary costumes and masks. And that, that's the intention is to scare you. So adults were scared and kids were definitely scared of it. But it is a tradition that's been passed down, I believe, from our African heritage as well wow. so yeah that's something if you don't know about jam for the dances you can um google that one as and well is this a particular day um during the christmas holiday season okay. i remember yeah okay and so I no asked particular friend, date just for the season yeah one of the days of the season. and i'm sure they have particular dates in different um cities, cities that they do it in and some continue those traditions more than others but definitely music blasting, blaring is, is normal for us in Jamaica and continues to be. I like how you say that, normal for us. <laughs> It certainly yeah. is. Yeah, I like it. I like it, it's true. There's a phrase that we have in Trinidad, that we don't party normal. And it's true. We don't party normal. <laughs> it is normal. beyond true. I we don't that party one. normal. We don't party normal. I mean, we don't. So I get it. 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 <laughs> so as we wrap up, because this is our last episode for 2019, so we look forward to seeing you in 2020. Um, we wanted to talk about what our favorite shows were, or the episodes, or guest for this year. Do you have any favorites? I don't have a favorite. I don't have a favorite, but I have a lot of things or certain things, particular things that I like about each each show. Yeah. Yeah, but I don't have a favorite at all. I do not. I do not. I was thinking about it before the show and I was like, do you have an absolute clear cut favorite? Yeah. Um I have a couple favorites that I would say. Um and they're favorite for different reasons. Um, some of the shows that stand out to me, for example, um, was the one with Tanya Ragbear. I think that just struck at my heart. Um, and if you watch that episode, you'll see there were a lot of tears shed in that episode, um, which wasn't a favorite, because not the tear shedding part, because I'm an ugly crier. <laughs> but what was so powerful in that episode was having her share her story just so that she could impact other people's lives, which most of our guests do. But after the show, just to talk to her and to find out that her daughters didn't realize that they didn't speak about it yes. was just <laughs> powerful beyond measure because it, it just resonates to you. you. You don't realize the impact of what you do until you hear how much it's, it's touched the family because they tuned in and watched it mm-hmm. and she was able to speak her truth is so elegantly. So that, that was a really standout episode for mm-hmm. me. Do you have a standout uh, Well, I want to go back to that because for those of you who haven't seen that episode, um, we had... We had someone that we know on talking about losing their 19-year-old daughter. And she was, for the first time, speaking about it on in any public forum. And um, she chose the Caribbean Edge. And we talked about it, remember? And she, the, the effects of her talking about it on her family, we talked about that with one of the daughters who we said on the show that she didn't talk about it and she never realized that she did not talk about it. Mm -hmm. So that was huge. That was, wow. Um, I like that we were able to open her eyes on that. I'm pretty sure now they're talking about it. (laughs) Oh gosh, and that helps. I am, that has to help. Talking about it has to help. 
So yeah. I think that was one of a very a show that that created like great impact. But like you said, a lot of our shows create impact. Yeah, that's why we're here. Yeah, yeah. Another episode that really stood out for me was uh, Carla Hill. Um, just her journey with with cancer and her choice, her decision to to be breastless. And just her spirit, her energy, her positivity on life, um, her love for fashion, um, just an inspirational woman to say, you know, accept me for who I am. And then her husband, Marlon, who was also a guest on this show and was able to educate us on immigration and how important the census was and just um, what a wonderful, powerful couple they are that have loved and cherished each other despite the challenges that come with their journey and not being able to have kids and, and what that means for them. So that was powerful as well, beyond measure for me. I, um, I had heard so much about Carla mm -hmm. and I had never met her. Um, I totally understood how is it that she ended up marrying a Jamaican man given the different cultures that I've learned and I totally understand why they click so well together mm -hmm. that that chemistry um, it works for them and I like I like checking them out on all of their social media <laughs> posts I enjoy that they are. I, I love their that. latest post yes, I love that yes yeah. the latest post was Oh my goodness, mind oh, yeah. blowing. It just shows the difference mind -blowing between Marlon the and Carla. Mind blowing. <laughs> mind blowing. We had Rain and Sky, and I just love their name, and they do Transcend LLC. Who we happened to see past weekend. Yes. <laughs> and their amazing mom, Gina Jarrett, who, you know, were on the show two separate episodes. We did two episodes with Gina. And she talked about her journey with brain cancer um, and just her positive energy, how she deals with that and just the education that came from that episode as well. And then her da their daughters who went through losing their dad, um, who was a member of Third World Band, and then shortly thereafter going through this journey with their mom, Gina. So another two powerful episodes that we were blessed to have um, the, this family join us to share and educate us as well. Um, so I, I obviously like the episodes that um, come from the heart and, and that we all learn something from and how open and honest people are when they come to the glass table. And in general, if you meet them, um, very nice, kind, and gentle people as well. Genuine. Genuine. Yeah. yeah. Genuine. So being a mom was one of the most viewed episodes. <laughs> and that one was just us. And we talked about, in all honesty, our journey of being a mom, just taking our, our lives from when our children were, were infants um, all the way up to college and um, our experiences there. And people really enjoyed that episode. Um, Thank you so much for viewing. <laughs> and that was the a great episode The excitement of being a mom. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's See, I know we had the Council General, Oliver Mayor, join us on the show, and that was very, um, a very informative episode. Um, and in particular, um, we sp he spoke to, you know, just having people invest in their country and the beauty and the culture of the country. And so that was very educational for us because we didn't know a lot about we investments we as well. I learned a lot. And yeah, yeah, I learned a lot in that show. So he opened our eyes there. Um, so we're getting a signal for comments. So we're going to try to read Thank your comments you, as well. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> we may have to use Christina's phone <laughs> to read comments. Sorry, we're having some technical difficulties today, but we're going to get through this. Um, we had a very interesting show with, um, thank you, Christina, uh, domestic violence. 
that was tugged at our hearts as well because we had some amazing guests. We met some amazing people in here. So Charlene Bowie, um, who's the founder of it, um, invi we invited her on the show through Nadia Saad, who was another guest on the show. So it just shows the connections that we've made. And from Charlene, um, she in, um, introduced us to her team as well. And they did a fashion show. But what was important about it is we had a team of women talking about their personal experience and how painful it was for them and how they got out of their situations, you know. And those leave lifelong scars on people. I know Nadia and I've heard her speak on the show and even at the fashion show event on the impact on her mom and then her own personal journey with it. And I mean, she watched her mom on the floor and couldn't go to her mom because they were so scared of their, their dad and the surgeries that her mom has gone through. So domestic violence, you know, it continues every day. We're hoping that just people watching it that episode, um, I think we did two episodes on that, can find support through that, know that you're worth more than someone beating you in that manner. And it's, it's okay to be alone. There are a lot of us that are alone because we choose not to be in those situations. Not saying you're choosing to be there, but you know, there's hope, there's, there's outreach programs, and, and just watch that episode or share it with someone because you never know what someone may have said that can impact you as well. Um, you never know whose life you're touching. You never know. You never know. Yeah, you don't. Um, Just so the little things, a little share, a little, a little, um, a little talk, a little conversation, absolutely. a hug, a, a kiss, a smile makes a difference. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And just seeing that someone else went through that and you're like oh my god she got out i can do this yes. and you have to do it safely you have to you know yeah. do your Smart research yeah. Yeah. yeah um so joan says she loved the rum cake and her favorite sorry is sorrel and judy brown thank you ladies for tuning in she love her crown bread <laughs> Um, and for Joan, you know, the Christmas, the holidays, about the birth of Jesus, and that's why we celebrate. Um, and then Joan mentions we have the Grand Market in Jamaica, which is the day before Christmas, where people go and buy toys, and they have all these specials. Really? And stuff. It's a huge Grand Market, so thanks Every for year? that. Mm -hmm. mm. And Joan says, yes, the good old scary John Kunus. So yes, um... That was definitely powerful. Um, Do you parang in Jamaica? No, explain what parang is. Mm. Parang is basically more of the Spanish version of the Christmas music. So people actually get together in groups and go to different houses like the yards outside i've and done sing. it yes it is wow what an experience it really is just lovely you're, you're just festive you're just happy it's christmas so you're traveling from house to house in groups with little um made-up instruments bottles like you know tubes like tin pans like whatever and you're singing and beating up and yes it's wow i get goosebumps now that I'm <laughs> and i know that that's similar to the u.s where they do the Christmas caroling right? right exactly I don't know and exactly. you guys can tell me um, because I just heard a lot of loud music we didn't parang right. Right. in Jamaica right. but yeah right. Right. Um, Joan is saying Carla and her husband were awesome and also Rain and Sky were also a favorite nice. um, they're asking us to share the, the in the Caribbean edge page sorry guys <laughs> <laughs> um, I think they're referring to our initial page as well and uh, I don't know because it's pending in here why it won't let me share it there well it's not a page first of all it's a group so we need to remember that and I think that's how we can differentiate when we talk about it the group was what we had first and then we decided mm -hmm. to base to open up a page so we gotta remember I guess that we have both um, but I, I think I love having both I love being able to share in both 
Yeah, and I'm not sure, you know, Sherilyn is more techie than I am with this stuff, so I'm not sure if I did or not. I'm not um, sure either. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, we did have um, a show, we had Joel on the show, I want to thank Joel who joined us on the show, and he did a couple episodes with us, Live, Laugh and Love, and he was so open on the show, especially learning from a male's perspective on some of our episodes. So he was great. And we hope Joel will come back in 2020 because I think a lot of people really liked him. I think so too. They connected yeah. to him. And that's because I connected to him. You connected to him. And that's simply because he, he speaks. He speaks from his heart. Yeah. He's very genuine. He's very raw. He just says whatever it is. He just says it. Yeah. And that's what we want. That's what we like. We like the transparency. And he was perfect in that position. Um, we did have, um, I'm trying to think of who we had on that. Oh, this one was a interesting show for me, which was The Black Warrior, one of our recent episodes. That, that we actually got a lot of feedback. A lot of comments on The Black and Even Warrior after the episode. show. Even after the show, long after the show. So just to mention that the episodes are also posted on YouTube because some people are not on Facebook. And if you want a quick snap at it, even if you're on Facebook, we you can, can share find the them on YouTube as well. Um, we but the Black Warrior was interesting for me because um, just his perspective and a lot of people have this perspective. I don't know about a lot, but... It was just, I liked the honesty of the man, meaning that you're being upfront that with women that you will have open relationships with them. Not That's for me personally. However, I would rather someone tell me, and I do have a friend that's like that, and I mentioned that on the episode, that he's not interested in being in relationships. He just wants to be with women. And that's fine because some people want that and there are women out there that are okay with that to some degree. Um, but it's not for everyone, right? But I love the honesty of it. Yeah, before I, before I invited him on the show, um, <laughs> I knew <laughs> that he, this is how, what he believed. And I, I couldn't wait to get him in front of the camera for all of you viewers to see exactly how real his point of view was. It wasn't mm -hmm. anything that he made up. And one of, um, one of my friends that, that basically gave me the idea of putting him on said to me, um, he's... He's one, he doesn't just talk the talk. You know, some guys mm -hmm. just talk. Yeah. She said he's not just a talker. He walks that walk. Mm -hmm. he, he's not going to say that he has open relationships or want open relationships just to us, just to create some kind of image. He tells them that and they decide whether or not they're going to condone it, basically. Yeah. And we know other people that live that life too, and they're women that, I don't want to say succumb to it, but <laughs> accept it. Um, consent. Yeah. They're in consent. Yeah. <laughs> and they may not be happy, but, you know, it's, you know, I don't know. There has to be We're something. hoping to have the women on the show, and we told them this. Yeah. It would be very interesting to get them, the women on the show to so if see you guys know their perspective that would want to come and share their views so we can better understand that position yes yeah. then please let us know we would <laughs> love to have them as a follow-up yeah um, follow we also had anika who was a former stripper turned reality star and she was doing her lipstick sale and fashion as i got well. a very good lip gloss from anika <laughs> so that was a very interesting show. She talked um, about her show. Yeah. So she was, yeah, very interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> we also had, let's see, Charmaine come on and talk about CBD oil. 
um, which her episode was very informative for us, especially for people um, living with pain. A lot of people could relate to um, to the to that choice. Um, Thankfully, so far I haven't gone through anything like that, but it's definitely something I personally would try as well. Yes, definitely. I, w I would try it. Yeah. I mean, that's all I can Absolutely. do. Absolutely. Um, people doing good in the community was another great, we had a couple of great episodes on that. Tassan Phillips stands out for, for me on that with the I Am Hope Foundation. Um, she actually recognized the Caribbean Edge um, as one of the top talk shows online so we thank the viewers for voting for us for that we got our first award <laughs> first thank award you. our first award hope one of many um <laughs> yeah but she does really great work because you know she built a school in africa and they had no no it was just dirt and you know being able to pave it paint it provide for the the children to go back to school and she also does things locally. And just for her charity, one of the things is, you know, just $95, you know, supplies one feed. kid yep. with two meals per day for the year. Yeah. So I Am Hope Foundation, you know, is We're gonna share that link, guys. Yeah, we're gonna you know, share she's that doing link. great. She's doing mm -hmm. great. She's in the community and she, she's working really hard. And tireless, and she's a single mom with one daughter. Mm -hmm. um, so definitely met some really awesome people through this. We had Kishai come on the show, yeah. and he talked about health and educated us as well. So Kishai, thank you for coming on. You definitely opened our eyes and gave us a different perspective, um, which is something very challenging for us in the Caribbean community as well. Kishai's spirit was, was one that, yeah. that we felt, yeah, that we truly felt. What we about had, Alan Cunningham? Yeah, that's just gonna say Dr. What about Alan, Mr. Cunningham, Alan Cunningham of People, People Profile. Profile. Yeah. And you know, for those of you that don't know about People Profile, you know, you can check out that episode as well. But Alan and his team have been doing great community work as well, recognizing people in the, ordinary people in the community doing extraordinary things. I think that's how we found Tassan as well, because we were at his award show, and um, she gave a powerful speech, and we definitely invited her on. So Alan, um, I went to his last award show, and it was amazing how much it's grown and how much appreciation he got for what he's doing. And it, we know it's not easy. And for his beautiful wife, um, who is also a, a strong part of that as well. So keep doing what you're doing, Cunningham and team family. <laughs> we support People you. People profile. We support you guys. Um, we, we support each and every one of you to be honest, yeah. which is why we invited you here, which is why we share your stories, share your goals, share your community work. We appreciate you. We, we support you. Yeah. yeah. We had some fun episodes. We had um, Joel one day when we were playing volleyball. He says, I know a topic for this show. And that's how Joel mm -hmm. ended up on the show. Um, and he says, I said, what topic? And he says, it's probably too raunchy for you. And I said, what, what is it? And he says, does size matter? <laughs> so that's how I said, I will do it if you come on the show. And he definitely came on and gave the male perspective. So that was one of our earlier shows. Um, very interesting. <laughs> you know, I'd like to have more of those shows because, you yeah. know, sex is such a topic that, that people rarely talk about. It's like taboo. Mm -hmm. And I think I always got excited whenever we were going to talk about anything sexual relationship-wise because people hate to talk about it. But then again, they do. I think if they find like a good group to share their opinions and share their own stories, it's it then they get comfortable and they share. I mean, we learn from one another. I always loved doing those promos because I would most of the time use the song, let's talk about sex, baby. Let's talk about you and me. Let's talk about... So I think all of that, I think we, we have to lighten it up every now and then as, as much as... um as much as we want people to know 
what is it that they can be doing in their community to make this world better. Um, it's nice to mix it up. Oh yeah, a and our viewers, from your, your responses, you obviously enjoy when we mix it up. We have such a, a wide range of guests, um, as well as personal insight that we share with you. So we definitely enjoy mixing it up. Um, we had an episode on why are you still single? <laughs> so that was a fun episode as well. That was a um, mixing it up episode. I know. Um, not sure we figured out why, <laughs> but it came down to probably not settling, and you know, just just life's challenges and relationships are never easy. Um, it's just how much you grow with that person and what you're willing to put up with, and when it's time to walk away. I think that's. How I summarize that particular episode. Right. <laughs> we talked about family drama. Family drama. <laughs> That's everyone has family drama, yes. I think. Yes, um, I think so too. Yeah. Might be good drama, who knows? But some people have some not so good drama. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think for me personally, family drama, um, the way I handle it is I just walk away. I don't really have the drama. I try to breathe and make the right decisions and stay calm. And, and I found that a lot of my friends are more like family for me than real family. Um, one or two may be shocked with that, but you know, I think a lot of people can also relate to that. Um, you can't disown your family, their blood. Um, However, you can choose who you want in your environment to, to make you, your life healthy and your decisions because your peace of mind and your mental state means more. And I think a lot of times you just have to step back and, and make some sound decisions for yourself. Um, so I've learned to do that in an early stage in life. So that really helps me with the family drama. Yeah. I chop people off. Right. Yeah, you just don't need it. You don't need it. <laughs> and we talked about customer service, Maybe. how different it is, especially, you know, we have a bad rap sometimes when you go into a Caribbean store and the service isn't on point and they look like they're having a bad day. And um, just, you know, if you own a restaurant or a, a bakery, you know, how do you want clients to view you know your business but they're so successful that I'm not sure we take time to be as customer service oriented as we should be yeah um, I'm big on customer service I remember stating that in the episode I remember also saying that I got most of my training from American American Airlines mm -hmm. when I worked in the airline industry um, I kind of always had it in me though. Like um, like when we went to the I Am Hope Foundation and Tashan recognized us for what we do. And she's like, she basically is recognizing people that, that realize that they are of service, that they're here to serve. And that's why we do this. That's why we do the Caribbean Edge so that we can serve, so that we can be of service to, to everyone who might be in need. Mm -hmm. um, it's about service. It's about service. And we talked about, we had one episode where the gentleman, um, his wife had Alzheimer's and um, he was living in his wife's home, well, their home with his girlfriend as well. So his girlfriend had moved in. And I guess we gave our opinion on that episode. <laughs> Um, I personally thought I was wrong that you would, you know, even if you're going to have your girlfriend, you know, I think you'd just move into a different environment because your wife's not going to remember anything. She's not going to remember that this is your girlfriend. And I don't think if she was of sound mind, she would have consented to it. So in my opinion, my humble opinion, I think that was a little, well, very distasteful is what I got from that episode and researching that one. 
not sure where they are with that. <laughs> I know. I, I, but I'd I would like that to follow for, up on that. I'd but hate I it for think, myself. Yeah, and I would like mm. to follow up on that. I, I'm honestly, I'm not so sure if I would hate it for myself. I might be that person that would decide. Yeah, my husband needs to have somebody here to give him what is it that I cannot give him. I might. Yeah. I cannot sit here and tell you that no, never. I can't. Yeah. I can't. I would have to be in those shoes. I would have to be in those shoes. <laughs> So we taught, had one episode on bad bosses, if you've ever had a bad boss, and I certainly had one. Um, you know, for me, what is a bad boss would just be someone that's a mean and evil and disrespectful and abuse of power because you control someone's pay, hence you control their lives and their families. So just if, if you're a boss that is not giving back to your employees as much as employees do dedicate themselves to your business, you know, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a really bad experience yeah. with the boss, but thankfully I don't have that and I stayed way too long for a paycheck in that situation, so. And I know a lot of people are in that situation. So I know people are setting goals, establishing what's important. As we grow, we make different decisions as well. Um, we're realizing how important health is, especially mental health. Um, and just, just living a better life. We talked about mental health a little bit with, yeah. with San Will. Mm -hmm. We did. Zen. So yes. Yeah, that um, we decided to call Zen. We, we, re we re christened her on our show, like really. <laughs> and, and Nadia talked about education as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I know she's running for Lauder Hill. Um, is it a commissioner? I'm not sure what seat she's running for, um, but we'll definitely post that as well. But she's just out in her community as well, doing wonders. A beautiful, amazing, strong woman that we've been able to meet through this show and that she's connected us to other people as well. We Thank you so much. Yes. Thank you so much. Can't thank her now. Yeah. Especially on her journey for domestic violence. Yeah. Can't, yeah. yeah. Thank you to Sean. Thank you, Charlene. Mm -hmm. I mean, so many people. Thank you, Alan. <laughs> and you know, Everyone. yeah, yeah, Everyone. all of you. We Each had one of early you. the show. How do we forget? Kishai. Um, wow. We had um, Dr. Kalia Camacho Ali. Right. Um, she was one of our first guests. Um, the first couple months, and that was Muhammad Ali's. Imagine we had Muhammad Ali's ex-wife on the show. Yeah. So wow. she. Wow, that was because of Fabian. We had Fabian here yes, also we had Fabian in on the this earlies. Show. Um, thank you, Fabian. And I know a, a few of you love Fabian and you asked about him. Um, we miss him too. We miss him too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so having her on this show um, talk about Muhammad Ali and a brief part of their life together. And then, you know, where she is now, what is she doing as well, was very interesting. And we thank her as well for coming on. We gave our perspective on R. Kelly, his sexual assault with minors. Um, yeah, I thought he was guilty. <laughs> uh, just because too many people have come out and, and you know, I feel it. If he was, um, I hate judging people, but... Everything that I've seen so far on it, you know, my gut tells me that, you know, people were taken advantage of in that situation. So we have so much more to do with 2020. And we're sorry if we missed any one or any episodes. Um, we had Andrew Spalling. Oh, you were trying to go to talk. each and every episode? No, just trying to I remember was just about everything to say. and uh -huh. what stands out. Any additional comments for us as we wrap up 2019? Who are we forgetting? Christina? If you want to go through each and every show, who are we forgetting? Um, well, um, hmm. Andrew Spalling, Smalling who is running for sheriff, um, joined us on this show. So we thank him for coming on. He talked 
briefly about safety. We also had Mayor Wayne Massam on the show talking to us his about show. his work in <laughs> yes. the city of Miramar yep. and fitness and family as well. Um, so we've had amazing guests. 2020, what does that mean for us? Oh my gosh. Um, more of wonderful time and moments with you all. I know one show we're definitely doing in 2020 is, um, I thought we'd do it in 2019, but we didn't. So. We're not going to tell you. We're not going to tell oh, you. Yeah, She's going to stop right there. I'm telling. I'm <laughs> telling. So 2020, and you can, you can, if I mess up and don't do it, you have to call me, you have to call me out on it. But I like the disclaimer. I yeah. love the disclaimer. <laughs> we're going to talk about a four-year-old girl who was kidnapped and brought to another country and what she remembers and where is she today, 2020. Not sure it will be the first episode, but stay we'll talk tuned. about it. So stay, stay tuned. tuned. <laughs> so what do we want to say in closing? Thank you, thank you, and thank you for making the Caribbean Edge the success it is. I want to thank my co-host, Ms. Cheryl Ann Marshall, for her spirit, honesty, love, friendship, um, kindness, her husband, Stu, for being there, and also Christina and Rain, our very special interns that are here with us for most episodes and their dedication to us as well. <laughs> Stop messing up my nail polish. You're squeezing my hand. <laughs> Any comments I need? <laughs> um, thank you so much. Um, special birthday shout out to my one and only and favorite son. <laughs> <laughs> this past weekend, he partied like a rock star. <laughs> and we are all still recovering. <laughs> Quite a handsome young man. Happy birthday. Keep mm -hmm. living and enjoying life safely. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Christina. <laughs> Any parting words, Ms. Sharon? Um, resolutions. Start now. You don't wait until January first. That's lame. That's very lame. <laughs> that's that's what I gotta say. Your resolution should start when you wake up in the morning. Is when you start setting those goals each and every morning. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I love all of you, each and every one of you. Believe it or not, I have that ability. <laughs> I do love each and every one of you. I appreciate each and every one of you. I appreciate Dawn for giving me this opportunity to sit here and chat with, <laughs> with you guys and let you guys know what we think and share everybody else's stories so we can create impact for each and every one of you. We hope that we can continue to do that for as long as we enjoy it and for as long as we live. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for keeping us company every Wednesday putting up with everything that we've done, all our technical difficulties. We haven't had that many technical Our tardiness in <laughs> starting. I mean, I'm, I'm, I humbly apologize and I thank you. Thank you so much for being here, just for being here. Thank you once again for tuning in to the final episode for 2019 of the Caribbean Edge. Thank you. Good night. Ciao for now. Take care.